Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to my part 3 of the How to Gem All 4 Star series. Um, I left off last time on the Yakshas, and I'm going to be going down the list, basically talking about every single 4 star in the game, and basically how to gem them. Um, last, last episode, I talked about all the random, you know, event plus rebirth monsters that you were able to get um, from before. I kind of just reviewed all of them. Now I'm coming back to all the normal elements and I'm going to be talking about just some of the normal um, um, attainable monsters that you can get from eggs or from the the shop summon, the special shop summon. So we're going to uh, start with the Loki because he's actually the first one on the list. Um, this, this fire Loki over here is a double sapper. He's got two skills that um, sap. 80% chance to um, land one two-turn sap and a 60% chance to land two two-turn saps. So this is actually comparable to the Water Yuki. Um, Water Yuki actually has a 60% chance on first skill to land two saps. So basically he has a 20% higher chance to land a sap, but his sap only lasts well will only land one sap um, instead of two. So in in certain situations, I, I would say, uh, if I were to compare him to the to the Water Yuki, I would actually say he's um, he's more reliable because the 60% it might land, it might not land, and sometimes you know when you go for multiple turns without landing sap on the golem, uh, there's a chance of the golem you know just like messing up your runs depending on whichever whichever other units you're running. If you're not running anything that has like ver very nice, um, you know, hard, hard nukes, um, AOE nukes to kill the side units when you're running running him against like Golem Speed 10, for example, then it might actually mess up your runs if you don't land um, like a single sap in too many turns. Um, the Golem might actually uh, eventually kill your team depending on the, the, the team comp that you're running. So I think in, in most cases, I, I would actually take this over the, the Water Yuki. Another reason why I would take him over the Water Yuki is because he's also balance type, meaning he has slightly higher attack, although it's not that much higher. It's basically only 200 um, more attack. If you watch all my all my guides, or not my guides, but like my test runs for Golden Speed 10, um, I did a v video previously talking about how you can use the solo light tank to attract the attention of all the dark monsters and then you can have your sappers um, basically take care of everything else. That's It's also one of the reasons why I think having a bit of extra attack is, is much much nicer because basically you want your sappers to deal as much damage as possible. Now I wouldn't say he's as good as a full skilled water miho. Um, a max skilled water miho I think is still more reliable because she has a skill book for increased damage as well as um, you know she starts off with a 100 percent chance to land a two, one two turn sap on first skill or was it one one turn sap but um, her her skill book actually increases her her damage on on the first skill by quite a lot by like 25 percent meaning that she actually has has pretty high attack she only has a, a 2k base but because of these skill books um, you basically treat her as if she had a higher base attack and uh, her second skill is an 80% chance to land one two turn sap, which isn't as good, but it's it's more reliable. It has a higher chance to land actually land saps. So I actually do like the the re reliability a lot more than um, landing multiple saps. So I think if you really want to use them, uh, if you want really want to build a sapper, I I would say um, you know a, a a water miho, a max skilled water miho is better than an unskilled fire loki but if you do actually skill this monster up he actually becomes a lot more reliable i think he gets his he gets his uh first skill to 100 percent and he gets his second skill to 80 percent which makes him uh, much much better but you will need to get skill books from him and right now there's no re real reliable way to get four star skill books so i'll have to treat him as if you basically cannot get skill books um for this monster okay moving on we're gonna Talk about the uh, the water Loki. Okay, so the water Loki is a water nuker. Um, he's got hunter on his first skill, and he's got thirst on his second skill. Now, a lot of people really like this monster, basically just for his uh, his hunter. And in in arena, um, this 100% chance to land thirst is also very very nice because he you want to build crit on him because of the hunter skill. So you you will reliably have very very high crit, if not 100% crit, on this monster, uh, making him very very good for arena offense. And he also has a very nice nice base attack. He has nice base HP. Not, um, 
you know, defense is a little bit low. Recovery is at 2k higher than defense, which isn't, isn't optimal, but he's still very, very nice to use as a random water nuker. Um, there's only, there's, there's only like this, this other monster, like the, the fire vampire who has predator on first skill. Um, and then this, he has hunter on second skill. There's not that many four star water nukers that are, that are all that good. Uh, there's, there's really like only, I think there's only like three four star water attackers um, four actually actually no if you count Thor that's five and then nobody's gonna be building this monster because he's too expensive to build um, so like reliably like four four water nukers for four star um, there's actually gonna be a new monster coming out the, the new mammoth monster who has double hunter I think will outclass this water Loki once once he actually does get released um, depending on how high his base attack is but this water Loki is pretty nice he has pretty high base attack decent amount of HP so you can actually build him up in a hybrid build you can go like crit rate HP attack um, but you definitely do want, want one slot crit rate on this monster um, in order to boost his his crit rate up because he's he's a crit reliant monster his hunter and his thirst are both reliant on his crit so you definitely do want to go with um, go with uh, you know double you, you you definitely want to go with mostly mostly attack if you guys didn't I think I kind of like skipped over the fire Loki, but my, my favorite build for all sappers, if you haven't been watching all the series before, is actually just like full glass cannon um, for Golem Speed 10 because he's never going to get hit. The the other popular build for like sappers is just, you can go full tanky. I think that's the standard build. Um, but I don't really see much use in sap like in the late game. You might be able to do that early game maybe for B9 because he is fire, but. Um, for the for the late game, I do really like building sappers like mostly attack, like either like crit rate double attack or or triple attack on uh, you know intuition valor ruin. Yeah, Ruin's definitely the best for for all attackers. If you've been if you've been following, um, Ruin is definitely the best. So if you can get this this monster on Ruin, he's also going to be very very nice. Um, his crit damage is also going to be very very good. If you can't use Ruin, um, Intuition would be the best because Intuition would also help you boost his his crit rate up a little bit easier. Um, so you can reliably get a hundred percent crit. I'm a big, big um, advocate of having 100% crit on monsters that you're going to be using on arena offense because a lot of times if you don't crit on one of your attacks, it can actually really cost you the fight. Um, I've I've had many, many situations where, like, if I if when I was like before before I got my second dark Atita, I was running um, a second dark Mona. It was it was actually very, very unreliable, and I had to kind of resort to using like an aggressor comp. To run uh, my arena offense, but if you're actually using attackers on arena offense and they're crit reliant attackers, I would actually, I would definitely recommend you build most of your attackers with 100% uh, crit in order to make things reliable. Because one one non crit can actually make your make it a fail very very easily. Uh, this is the Wood Loki. Now this guy's a very very popular monster. Now he, I see him in a lot of a uh, lot of arena defense because mainly he has this. He has he has the uh, the defense skill, defense leader skill for all allies. So if you put him, have him as a variant and you put him as a leader, he can increase the defense of your whole entire team. And people like to do this on arena defense now. They basically put him up as um, as lead, and they also have him um, to do armor break. Basically, he is like a pseudo wood Leo for arena defense. He basically has the the um, kind of the same skills. Wood Leo has. HP lead and he has defense lead and his armor break has a 10% higher chance than the Leo so that's why he's been very very popular recently he's also a defender meaning that he's mostly tanky he has a little bit of attack he's very very uh, very decent stat distribution I wouldn't say it's exactly like super super optimal like the wood Leo but he has pretty nice stat distribution so people basically just use this guy as a pseudo wood Leo on defense um, you can build him full tank, you can go with one slot attack, you can go defense HP attack, you can go um, defense double HP, or I think defense HP attack is actually very very nice on this monster because he, he does have a decent amount of base attack as well, so pretty nice. Um, for all defense monsters, I think conviction is definitely the best, and um, if you don't have conviction you want to make him tank here, I think life set or protection set are also very very nice on this monster if you can get high enough substats on those sets. Or if you can't make a set, you can always use a broken set. Uh, 
So Light Loki, he was a package monster. They basically released a package where you were able to buy this this monster for six six thousand astro gems. Um, he's mostly a Titan Colossus monster. He has attack down and defense down, both very very nice skills. If you skill him up, he basically gets an eighty percent three turn attack down, which is basically like as strong as a, a lot of other you know like Water Indra and stuff. For example, he he has a very very nice skill, and this also becomes an eighty percent um, three turn defense down, I think, or two turn defense down, um, which is still very very nice. So he has very he has very even stat distributions. His recovery is a little bit high, but it's actually okay. Um, you can gem him full tank. You, you, if you're planning him to put, put, to put him with some attacker comps, like if you're running him on the on the second line, um, or or I mean if you're running him on the first line, you're you're running like him against the uh, you know Dark Titan or something. Um, he might like you you can't reliably keep him alive because he's not super super tanky. So if you're running like a full nuclear comp against like the dark dark titan on the on the first line, um, you can actually gem him up with you know just one slot attack so he can survive one attack and then basically just die the next turn or something like that. Um, depending on, I think that's a viable strategy. Some people actually do that for for the dark titan. I'm not I'm not gonna pretend I know too much about clan battles because I really don't. I don't I don't do too too many clan battles, but I do know the basics of uh of team building for clan battles. Um, this is the, this is the, uh, or if you guys didn't catch it, like, conviction set is the best. Like if you're if you're if you're trying to run him, um, if you can't run conviction, you know, broken set, um, protection set, life set, it's all also very very nice. But I think set bonuses are not as important as the actual substats of the gems. If you can get really really good substats that basically, um, you know, outweigh the set bonuses, the, the substats will actually be much, much better. Like, getting three random random broken gems um, without any substats can still be very, very nice. So this, this is the Dark Loki. He's a double seal. Um, his seal chance, I, I would say, is not all that high, but he is a very, very nice, like, tanky monster. So you can actually use this guy on defense. I'm not a big fan of... Uh, I'm not a big fan of Seal. Like I, I know Seal is a, a very, very popular skill for arena defense, um, but it, it might actually be the case of either me running like a full, uh, full. Like I even run some full aggressor comps in offense sometimes. Like I auto a lot of my arena offenses um, with a with a aggressor comp, and Seal isn't really too much of a threat in my opinion. Like even if they seal you, you basically like you can still survive. Uh, for two turns, and then just come back the next turn and and uh, yeah, and, and fuck them up. So I, I really don't think Seal is too much of a threat. Um, Seal might actually be better for mid tier PvP when people's resistance is not as high. Um, you can still reliably put Seal on them, and you can kind of screw up their fights depending on the the situation, depending on what other um, units you're running on arena defense. You can also use them on arena offense. Seals is also very very nice in mid tier PVP on arena offense. So um, you mostly want to just build him tanky because you know he is a dark type monster. I would say conviction is also very nice because dark types don't have any sort of resistance. So boosting his re resistance up with a conviction set is also very nice if you can put that set together. Um, you can go HP HP defense. You might even be able to go HP attack defense if you really want to, but I think it's a little bit of a waste. Um, I think HP HP defense just make him as tanky as possible. If you're running him like maybe with some other aggressors and then like a healer or something, you can make a very reliable um, offense comp or defense comp in, in mid tier PvP. So this here is the uh, is the fire tiger. He's got a defense break and a sap. Um, I think the I think the defense break is is very nice. It's actually a sixty percent for three turns. So this is actually much better than the wood leo. Um, he's also got a sap. I think this this monster is actually viable for running as a as a sapper for golden speed ten because he actually has very very high attack. He also has defense break, so he can he actually provides two very good debuffs. Unfortunately, his sap chance is very very low. Uh, we'll see in the future. Maybe he can get skill book upgrades for like a sixty percent armor or eighty percent three turn armor break. Um, then if he can if he can get like a skill upgrade, then he actually might be. Uh, 
he actually might even be very good for, for running against Titans because there's not too many good fire armor breakers in right now. There's the Yuki, there's him, um, but they both have very, very low chance, like 60% to start. And the th there's no like 100% fire armor breaker. Um, the highest is Odin with 80% and Nightmare with, uh, with also 80%. So there's not too many fire armor breakers. There's actually a lack of uh, like super reliable fire armor breakers. Because I think for water there's there's a uh, there's Shelly, and then for wood there's the wood Gatito. Um And I, I actually do have two wood Gatitos, so that's actually very very nice. But for for fire there's no 100% armor breaker. So the highest you can get is a 80% armor breaker. And if you can get a skill skill book upgrade to make his 80, like a 3 turn 80%, um, his armor break would outclass the Odin's armor break, but his stats are not too good. Um, you know, his HP is very low, defense is quite high, attack's pretty high, um, but recovery is also very high, so that's not too good. Um, do you want the recovery to be as low as possible so his stat distribution can go to, go to something else? But I think all in all, he's not too bad. Um, you can actually run him from Golden Speed 10. You can build him a full full attacker for that. You can also build him hybrid, depending on your team. Maybe you're running um, no light units, then you can put one HP gem on him, like an HP HP double attack, um, or you can go with a uh, triple attack or crit rate double attack um, on Ruin set, ideally. Um, Intuition, Valor also works. I think the easiest way to gem him is like literally just triple attack Valor. I, I do that for a lot of my like secondary sappers, not not my primary sappers for Golden's B10. I'm doing like test runs, like my Water Miho and stuff, for example. So I think this this monster is actually a decent monster now. He's got a six, 70% taunt and a 70% two turn armor break. Um, taunt is actually very, I think, I think theoretically very good against Colossus. I don't know too much because I I haven't really done Colossus. Um, it, it just isn't worth doing right now. Like Colossus, the resource that you put in and the the stuff that you get back is not worth the. Is it doesn't pay off basically. So um, I haven't really been doing a lot of Colossus runs, but I think his stats are not too bad. He's very very tanky. Basically, just want his uh, defense and HP to be high. His recovery is a little bit high. I would have wished this 400 went to like 4k HP instead, and then he would have been like a really really nice um, tank monster. But the good thing about him is he's not only is he a uh, a water tank um, because the B10, like B10 of Colossus, is actually fire. So I think for very very late game, uh, water monsters are, are going to be ideal for for Colossus B10. Um, he's also got a got a 70% you know taunt, which basically taunt lowers damage now. And his second skill is actually a useful debuff against Colossus. It's actually an armor break debuff, so that's also not too bad. Um, I would just gem him full tanky, like, you know, HP, HP, defense, conviction, or I would gem him, um, yeah, just HP, HP, defense, like, there's, there's really no other way, you just gotta make him as tanky as possible, because he is a, he is a taunt monster, um, conviction set's still the best, like, uh, I, I think I'm repeating myself quite a lot, but conviction set is still the best, the resistance, um, from conviction is very, very nice, as a, as a, as a, like, just a, a set bonus. Uh, resistance is definitely one of the like the key key stats in Monster Super League, and one of the reasons why you don't run resistance as a main stat is because it actually um, it would over it would like give you too much resistance basically. Like if you run resistance as a main stat uh, as one of your gems, uh, there's actually a cap of eighty percent. And the reason that's one of the reasons why you don't run resistance as one of your main stat, but you still want to reach um, that 85% cap. So you try to do that with your sub stats, and you try to do that with your set bonuses. And that's one of the reasons why conviction set is the one of the like best sets for all tanky monsters, basically. Um, and definitely go life or protection set as well if you if you can put those sets together with high resistance. But I would uh, I would take a broken set with high resistance over a life or or a protection set if you if you had to choose basically or if I had to choose so this is the wood tiger um, he is a he is a wood nuker basically he has got predator on his first skill very very high attack stats 
decently high HP. I think um, you know this stat distribution is very nice for an attacker because you can go with HP attack. Um, you can go with HP attack attack, or you can go triple attack, or you can go crit rate double attack. Because this guy's not crit reliant, so you know even triple attack works. Um, Ruins definitely still the best if you're going the crit rate route. Um, Intuition's also very nice if you if you can put together an intuition set um, with triple attack, or if you're if you just you know if, if you just don't want to bother with crit rate at, at all and you just want his um, attack to be as high as possible. Um, Valor is also very very nice. I think Valor triple attack has higher DPS than than intuition triple attack, but I, I could be mistaken. Um. But the, the DPS shouldn't be shouldn't be too much of a difference either. So kind of depends on if you want him to crit sometimes and do more damage, or if you want him to um, always do the same amount of damage, basically. So this guy this guy is the um, light tiger. He's also a he's also a nuker, but he's got very very good stat, like much better stats than the uh, the, the wood one. He's also a 100% CC monster with Hunter on second skill. Um, I talked about the Wood Yaksha last time, and he's basically has the same skill, but this monster is actually better because he has slightly higher base attack, and he's also got an attack lead, which is very, very nice for Dragon's B10. Um, and the other thing is, um, well, actually, the Yaksha is crit damage lead, so it's the, the two kind of are, are, are kind of the same, depending on how you're building your monsters. Um, the other th really good thing is he has Hunter on his second skill, and he has a hun he has ten percent more crit being a light monster. So it's much much easier to get him to a hundred percent crit because both his his skills are crit reliant. If you're running him for dragons B ten resistance isn't too much of an issue because if you if you're getting hit, um, you die in one shot anyways. So there's really no point. You can just basically build him full attack for dragons B ten. Um, go with uh, crit rate double attack. Ruin's definitely the best if you can put him on ruin. Um, the second best would be valor. And then third would be uh, intuition if you want to put him on 100% crit, and yeah, he's 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 definitely like a very very good monster for uh, for Dragon B10 just to run as a nuker because of his his hunter on second skill. It basically makes him so much better of a of an attacker, and his his high base attack as well over 3k uh, base attack is very very nice on a on a nuker. Um, you can also use him for, I think, PvP offense in the lower tiers because he does provide a two-turn CC. So you can go, you can go crit rate HP attack as well, um, or you can go crit rate double attack on on arena offense, depending on your other units. If your other units are a little bit tankier and not like glass cannons, if you're running like full glass cannons, then you wanna, you don't want one monster to be tankier than the others. There's really no, uh, that, not that much of a point. But it, it kind of depends on the situation for PvP. It depends on your other units that you're running. So. There's there's multiple ways to build them, but basically those those two ways are, are the best. Now this is a dark tiger. He's got battle rush. He's the only I think no he's not he's no longer the only four star with battle rush because the Fibian actually has it. But he his battle rush is not relying on crit, um, and he's got a attack down, a sixty percent two turn attack down. He's not he's definitely not too bad. His stat distribution is a little bit weird though. He's got a very high HP, not too much defense. Um, I could build him HP HP defense and basically put him on arena defense to be kind of annoying because his battle rush is always going to be healing him so you don't focus him first um, and he's going to be like you know getting his bar full faster than the others and spamming this attack down. I think he would be a very nice pugilist monster if you can put him on a pugilist set and just put him on arena defense because he's not going to get focused because of the battle rush. Nobody really wants to focus him. And if you have a pugilist set um, and he gets his bar full, he's he's just going to be stunning like mad. So that's also a very very nice way to build him. Um, you can also build him conviction, but I think he's not really all that optimal if you don't have pugilist on him. Um, he's kind of mediocre if you if you can't put a pugilist on on the dark tiger for arena defense. He's yeah, he's not too good for titans either. I would <laughs> I would not recommend him too much. Um, this is the Fire Sura. Now this guy's a very unique monster. He's got a morale boost and he's got a adrenaline that heals for 20% but this is only a single target skill meaning that he literally only heals for 20% on his active. Um, basically I wouldn't say he's too good of a monster like his his heal is uh, compared to other like AoE type monsters with like 10% adrenaline they they can heal for forty percent, 
um, in most situations. Like if they're against four enemies, they heal for 40%. Even if they're only against three enemies, they heal only still heal for 30%. And if they're against two enemies, they still heal for 20%. So um, basically, monsters with AoE, like AoE adrenaline, are still going to be better than monsters with the like basically the light sura or the fire sura. Um, but the other thing is he does have a morale boost, meaning that he will get his second skill a little bit faster than others. But there are also other monsters that have uh, adrenaline and also have morale boost that can outclass his monster. So I think he would he's def definitely a, a second rate monster compared to those those other monsters that have the AOE um, adrenaline heal. You can still build him if you want to. He's he's a decent attacker, but his skills don't really match his uh his attack. You can just kind of treat him as a single target attacker that has a s small heal, like a small pseudo heal. Um, but yeah, his his stats are also not too good either. Hmm. I think he's okay. Um, if you want to build him, if you really want to build him, I would say you can go triple attack. You can go HP double attack because he also heals a little bit. Uh, you can go crit rate double attack. Basically, like the the general attacker build that's not reliant on on crit. Um, you can build him that way. All right, the Water Sura is a very very nice PvP monster. Very popular PvP monster. Um, He's basically, he's got a two turn critical, if he crits, he gets a two turn stun. He's also got Predator on his second skill, meaning he does a he does a decent amount of damage with his second skill. It's like an AoE hit. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a very popular PvP monster. Most people just go, um, most people go crit rate HP defense or crit rate double HP, depending on um, the substats of your gems. I think crit rate HP defense has higher effective HP. Than crit rate double HP. Uh, you do want the crit rate gem because you do have to stack his crit rate to 100%. So he's he's actually very hard to gem because you need 100% crit, and he's also going to be used on arena defense. So you need decent amount of uh, resistance as well. So that's also important. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward monster. Get him to 100% crit. Make him as tanky as possible after that, and he will he will serve serve you well. Um, and any resistance you can get, you want to boost his resistance as, as high as possible. So that's pretty much it. If you can get a conviction set on 100% crit, that's also very, very nice. That that would be uh, ideal. I think you can put put him on intuition with high resist substats as well. That would, that would also work. Um, this monster is kind of no, because he's got a single target sap. And... Got a seal. He's relatively tanky. You could possibly use him on arena defense, but I, I don't know why you would want to build him over the water one. Um, if you want to build him, it's basically HP HP defense on conviction is probably still the best build. Um, if you can't put on him on conviction, go with broken set or or life or, or anything else basically. I was about to say that monster is just no. Sometimes I look at monsters and I say that monster is no. Adrenaline. Uh, he's got a very unique adrenaline that heals for allies HP by 10%. And he's also got another um, adrenaline that heals for 20%. So he's, he's a very uh, very annoying healer if you put him on defense. he just He's just going to basically make your tanks tankier. Unfortunately, he is not as tanky himself. He is balance type. So what other people could do is actually just kill him first. Um, to make his heals kind of irrelevant. He's also light, meaning that dark attackers can kill him very, very easily. Um, he's a pretty cool, unique monster. I would probably gem him as tanky as possible if I do have him, and put him on arena defense. You can go with... Yeah, I think HP, HP defense is still the best. Um, conviction... Yeah, Conviction is still the best. Conviction is definitely still the best. I would gem most attackers that way. This is the Dark Sura. He's very, very similar to the Dark Atito, but instead of having a morale boost, he has an HP Siphon on first skill. He also has, I think, slightly higher... Oh, uh, actually, no. Not as high um, base attack as the Dark Atito. 
but he does have the, the Hunter as well. Um, he does also have a crit lead, so we can actually get him to 100% crit relatively easily. And he's a very nice um, very nice monster to run on arena offense. You can run him in Dragon Speed 10 as well. Definitely a pretty good monster. Um, I would say you know crit rate double attack is definitely the best if you want to run, run him on offense. I think monsters like these, if you run double attack, um, they have a very high chance to to kill a lot, a lot of things um, before they kill you. And he also has a self heal, so I don't think gemming him with one HP is is that necessary because he basically can regenerate whenever he's he's attacking. Um, and if he if he's dealing high amounts of damage, it means that he's also going to be healing more. So I would highly recommend um, full glass cannon build on this monster. All right. Since the pebbles here, we'll talk about the pebble. Since he is a he's a guardian um, dungeon monster, so he's also relatively easy to obtain, but he's kind of expensive to summon. He's mostly used on arena defense because of his stun and taunt, um, both very very annoying CC skills, and he's really really tanky. He's also got the HP lead, which is why he's made super popular because um, HP lead is not that easy to get early on. So you can actually use his HP lead. Um, go with um, HP double. Or HP double HP defense and conviction is still best. Uh, if you can put him on pugilist, he's also very very annoying. You do want his resistance to be high, so he can like you can't CC him or anything. He, he's just gonna be super annoying, and he's gonna be CCing nonstop. Um, if he gets his taunt off, he's gonna be CCing them even more. So that's very very nice. Uh, he's he's a he's a nice defense monster. Basically, you know, make him tanky high resistance and you slap put him on defense and uh, use his HP lead to make him even tankier make everyone even tankier and he'll be very very annoying um, for, for arena defense so uh, I'm gonna talk about the Hermite since this is also a guardian um, dungeon monster that I didn't talk about he's basically got a morale boost and taunt um, also a taunt monster, so I would actually gem him as tanky as possible. He's got a good balance of HP and defense. Um, it, defense is slightly higher, but I would still gem him double HP defense. I think double HP defense in most cases has yields higher effective HP because H D defense has a diminishing return after 3k. So um, if you stack your defense that much higher, it's not really go going to um, benefit you that much unless the HP pool of that monster is just super, super low. But anything, I think even anything above 20k still has higher effective HP if you go with um, double HP defense instead of double defense HP. So yeah, I think that's, that's basically how you gem him. Um, you make him tanky. He also has a decent amount of attack. You can also go hybrid build if you want to use him for farming because he also has morale boost. Um, so you can you can go with uh, you can go with HP defense attack as well. Or if you just like need a morale boost nuker and you have nothing else, you can go with like triple attack as well. Um, because just to utilize his morale boost, basically. I don't think there's a wood event monster. Yeah, there's no wood event monster. So we're going to have to move down the list. Um, we're going to take a look at the fire vampire. Now this is a very popular monster for people running, on, running him on... Uh, I can't remember if it was dragons B8 or B9 that was wood. Um, but yeah, basically the the dragon stage where where uh, all the monsters are are wood. Uh, he's a very very popular monster. This is also a very very ni nice monster to use against um, Golem Speed Nine because of his self sustain. He's got a very nice uh, fifty percent heal on his on his first skill whenever he crits. But he is also crit reliant, so you definitely do want it on a crit gem. Um, it's kind of hard to get a crit gem early on, but if you can get just one crit gem, I would just put him on, on that one crit gem. Um, a broken set if I need to, but ideally you do want 100% crit on this monster. Um, very ideally you do want Ruin as well because he's a crit reliant monster. Um, so, you know, basically crit rate double attack, or because of his self sustain, I would definitely recommend double attack over HP attack crit rate. Um, but his HP, if you do do HP attack crit rate, his uh, he's also going to be healing a lot more as well. I just I just think that like he doesn't really need to survive, like he doesn't need to 
Um, he's not going to be losing 50% of his HP bar in most situations if you're running him against wood dungeons, even if you're gemming with double attack. So I think that HP gem is usually, in most cases, unnecessary. But you can also make him relatively tanky if you go with one HP gem as well. Um, his base HP is also pretty nice, so that's definitely not too bad either. Alright, the Water Vampire is a nuker, basically. Um, Predator and Sleep, you basically just want him with high attack. Uh, the standard attacker build, you can go with uh, HP double attack, you can go with triple attack, you can go with crit rate double attack, um, depending on whatever gems you have. If you have Ruin, then you can go the crit rate route. If you have Intuition or um, Valor, you can go triple attack. And... Or you can go HP double attack, um, or you can go HP crit rate attack on Ruin. That that also works as well if you if you have the gems. But yeah, he he's not crit reliant, so basically just stacking attack will make his uh, make his damage pretty nice. He's got a nice he's got nice distribution, pretty decent distribution, I would say. Pretty nice, pretty high attack, like for a for a four star. Um, Three thousand two hundred is pretty good. So the Wood Vampire is a morale boost sapper. He's got a 20% morale boost, 80% chance to land two, two um, one turn saps. So actually, that's not too good compared to like the Fire Loki or something. Or the actually no, Fire Loki only has 60%. So I would say that's fair. Um, he has a more reliable sap that actually is pretty nice. He also has morale boost, meaning he's going to be using his AOE sap a lot more. I definitely think this is a, a viable monster for Golem's B10. Um, you can run him with triple attack for B10. You can build him semi-tanky. You can go with HP defense attack. You can go with full tanky if you want to. If you're running uh, a full tanky comp. I, I don't see much uses of that. You can maybe use that for like for a uh, I don't know. Maybe you have like a full some aggressors and you have him and then you don't have any light units for golems B10. Um, you can run him full tanky. But I think it's mostly HP attack defense or just full attack or you can go with HP double attack as well. Um, yeah, this is, this is a balanced type monster. You can gem him a, a lot of different ways. If you're going attacker build, I think like, you know, Valor, Ruin, um, Intuition is the best. If you're going mostly tanky, Conviction, Life, and uh, Protection is the best. So the light vampire, he's got very very high attack, um, nice a decent amount of HP as well. He's also got a self heal, and he has defense down. Um, most people run this guy for a golem's B10. They put do put one HP gem on him because he is light. The dark units do do a lot of damage on him, so basically they go with HP um, double attack most of the time. Just go with HP double attack. You could also go HP crit rate attack with ruin because he's he's light, so his crit rate is definitely higher. Um, if you can get high crit rate substats on, on a Ruin set, then he would actually deal more damage um, to, to kind of use his uh, his crit rate skill, uh, or, or base crit rate as a light monster. Yeah, he's one of the better light um, AoE armor breakers because he's, he's also got a nice self-sustain. So he's a, he's, a, he's a nice monster. He's a really nice monster to run for um, Golem's B10 if you have a full light team. I think the most popular build is the HP attack, um, yeah, H HP attack, attack. That's that's the that's definitely the most popular build. Uh, this guy's got a eighty percent three one turn sap and taunt. Um, he's also very tanky. You could use him in Golem's B10. Um, you basically you can gem him tanky. I don't see many practical uses for this monster. I'm gonna say he's a no. All right, this this monster is a no. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry to anyone that has him. He's he's a no. <laughs> that that monster is just no. Um. Fire Yuki. Fire Yuki's got a two defense down. I think I think she's pretty nice. Uh, man, we can. We're we're almost halfway through. I'll, I'll do like 
hit her and one more. I'll do the Johns after, and then we'll we'll end this video here. And then in the next video, I'll finish up all the four stars. Um, so the Fire Yuki is a is a uh, attacker. She's got pretty nice space attack, um, pretty nice stat distribution as well. She's got a double double defense down. Um, there's not too many good fire defense downers, so like you know, 60% on a fire defense down is also is already pretty nice. Um, she also has skill books upgradable to 80% on both her skills, so that's that's definitely not too bad. Um, you can, if you want to use her for Titans, I would say the attack HP defense build is still still best. If you just want to use her for farming and stuff, you can go triple attack, um, full nuke. You can go HP double attack as well um, on Valor and stuff. But if you're going for for the the Titans build, uh, the the Bruiser Titans build, then um, Conviction I would say is still the best. The the resistance is very very nice, um, especially against like Wood Titans who has like that double sap. Um, resistance is very very important. So I think Conviction is definitely still the best set. Um, even if you're running her as a like a attacker for Titans. Um, Conviction is still very, very nice if you're because you're mostly going to be running her against wood, and even the other titans have very annoying debuffs as well. So, um, Conviction is, I think she's mostly a titan's monster. Conviction is, uh, is, is pretty good. So, this is the Water Yuki. Um, she's, she's quite famous actually. A lot of people know her as one of the better sappers. Um, she's got a 60% chance to land two one turn sap and a 60% chance to land two two turn saps. So, that's actually pretty good. Um, she's also got. She's also got pretty tanky stats. Uh, yeah, she's basically just a. a a normal sapper. Um, if you want to use her for B10, you gem her full attack. If you're running her with light tanks, you can go with uh, one HP double attack, and she would actually be tanky enough to survive B10 as well because of how high her her base HP is. Um, you can go with double double HP or HP defense attack as well if you're if you're running her with uh, I don't know if you're running her with like other tanky monsters that 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 could also work uh, for like tanky dark aggressors for for golems B10. Um, you can you can go that build as well. I would say uh, if you're going mostly attack, if you're using her for golems B10, um, you really don't like resistance is not that that important. I think Valor set is also very nice to just boost her HP, boost her attack up a little bit more. Um, I don't think she's worth building the crit rate build. It's kind of a waste to waste like good attack gems on her. But you can I think you can throw like three random Valor attack gems on her if you really need to. To use her for um, for B10, so I think Valor is probably my, my favorite set to use on on this monster, because um, she's already so tanky that she really doesn't need to be like super super tanky. Um, you could also use her. I think Colossus is, is going to be sappable now, so we'll see if uh, Sap will be really nice against Colossus. Um, if if she, if she needs to like Sap Colossus, and you're building like units like full tanky then she could also be very very good for that that job as well but we'll we're gonna have to see we're gonna have to see uh how much damage um sap does to colossus after the update all right this monster is a no all right that, that, that monster is just just straight out no um the light yuki is a is a shock monster she's got an 80 percent one turn shock and a 50 percent two turn shock um, mostly for arena offense because she is an attacker. Unfortunately, she's not a like a tanky type, or else she could be used for arena defense. Um, yeah, if you're running her for arena offense, you're running her with mostly nukers. You can go triple attack. You can go crit rate double attack. She's not crit reliant, so that's that's also very nice. Um, I would say full glass cannon. Like I'm. I'm a big fan of full glass cannon on on attacker builds or on arena offense builds, um, but you could also you can also use her in, as a nuker if you're running her for a uh, for golems B10 as well. You can go HP double attack in that case. She has decently like decent HP and defense stats as well, so that's you can actually make her relatively um, tanky. Not super tanky, but like with one HP gem, she could, she should should be able to be okay in most situations. Um, 
yeah, it's either HP double attack or triple attack or crit rate double attack. Um, Ruin, Intuition, Valor. Conviction could work as well if you're running her for arena offense. Um, resistance is also nice in that, that situation because she's also light. Alright, this is the Dark Yuki. Um, at first glance, she's not too good. But she actually has an 80% uh, 2 1 turn zap. And what actually makes this monster really, really strong is her skill book upgrade. If you upgrade her skills, she actually gets a 100% 2 2 turn zap on her second skill, which makes her just as strong as the Fire Persephone. She's also dark. Um, although she's tank type, she has a decent, like, I would. I would say this is a decent amount of attack substats for, for a tank monster. So you can actually gem her like full attack build. You can go with crit rate, double attack. Um, and she can actually do very, very nice damage. I would say this is a very, like a very, very end game build. Um, early on, without any skill books or anything, she's not too good of a monster. But if you can actually get really good gems on her, you can skill her up. Uh, she actually has potential to be one of the best sappers for, for Golem's V10, in my opinion. Um... Yeah, triple, uh, not triple attack, um, crit rate double attack, I would say is the best. Uh, you could use her early on with a uh, crit rate HP attack. I think she should be tanky enough to survive if you, if you go that route. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, 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 that's all there is to it. All right, well, we'll take a look at the Jeans, and then that'll, that'll be the end of this video. This monster is a no. All right, or I'm sorry, that monster is just that monster is no. The monster is a straight out no. Okay, so uh, this is a very, very popular monster on Arena Defense because she has a 100% CC without any sort of reliance on any other skill. Basically, she just gets this straight out of the uh, straight out of the box. She gets a 100% sleep, and on her AOE, she gets a 60% stun. Um, she's kind of a budget Water Odin, but in my opinion, Water Odin's already not even that good. So she's more of a mid-tier PvP monster. Um, people run her, run her in a lot of comps. She's actually quite popular. You see her in a lot of comps in mid-tier PvP because CC could be quite annoying. Uh, and she, if she does get her AOE stun off, it can, in some cases, it can win win you the fight um, in arena defense. So basically, just make her tanky HP, HP defense, conviction set, um, or broken set, whichever has higher resistance is kind of the only way to go, in my opinion. So this is a decent uh, wood nuker monster. She's got stalker on both her skills, 20% crit. Um, yeah, she's basically just a pretty good um, wood nuker with double stalker. Very easy to gem, very easy to get to um, you know high crit rate. And you, you don't even have to get high crit rate on her. You can even go triple attack because the the base um, you know 30% attack would actually contribute to that as well but she's also very easy to gem on ruin because you don't really need any good crit substats and you can push 100% crit on ruin if you go with a crit rate double attack very very easily so she's just a very easy to gem wood monster um, definitely viable I think ruin with crit rate double attack or triple attack on intuition or triple attack on valor that also works um, I think Ruin build is, is probably best to get her, her crit rate up there, or her damage up there. Alright, this is a very, very strong HP aggressor. She's got very, very nice HP. Um, unfortunately, her defense is not too high, but because um, HP has no diminishing return, if you just keep stacking it, she also becomes relatively tanky. Uh, and basically, like, you, you don't really need to, like... Resistance is not that much of an issue um, on her because even if she gets armor broken, she's not that likely to die. 
Like it's it's also still very hard to kill her because of her her super high HP pool. Although I would still put some resistance on her just in case they try to CC or stun her and stuff. Um, basically, you just want to stack her HP as high as humanly possible. So life set on triple HP with as much HP self stats as you can. That would definitely be ideal in my opinion. So this is a Dark John. Uh, she is very. She, I, I think she's a very nice monster. She's got very nice stat distribution, um, just tanky stat distribution, and she's also very annoying. She's just morale boost and just keeps silencing. Um, I would. You can put on conviction um, with HP, HP defense, but I think she's a very very nice monster to put on pugilist. Like if you can get put put pugilist on this monster, she's going to be super super annoying because she she's going to be morale boosting nonstop, stunning and silencing, and it's going to be like the craziest shit ever. And she's also super tanky, so then then they can't really focus her down. Um, so yeah, that that's actually pretty awesome. You know, I actually regret making her a variant. Her variant color is actually really ugly. Her, her normal color looks way better. Look at this, compared to this. Actually, the hair color looks really nice, but the the dress color looks looks horrible. Anyway, that is pretty much it for um, part three. I think it's part three. Yeah, part three of my How To Gem series. I just wanted to kind of make this video to, to help you guys out. Um, and make a guide. I'll be continuing in part 4 and I think in part 4 we should be able to finish up all of the 4 stars and then um, in the future I will continue on reviewing all the 5, like how to gem all the 5 stars and then how to gem all the uh, all the all the usable 3 stars um, in the future. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it's just me sharing my opinion, my knowledge. Um, this is very very opinionated and, and I do have some biases towards certain skills and um, this might not be applicable to all points of the game because I, most of my viewpoints are from like you know an, an end game player. I, I do consider myself an end game player. Like um, you know, if I don't value CC too much, I don't value um, um, like debuffs too much because in in higher arena, like everybody has like max resist, so debuffs become a lot less valuable. So I I value skills like morale boost. Um, AoE healing a lot more than, than uh, other skills, you know, so that's, but this is, this is just, uh, you know, just trying to, trying to give you guys some tips on how you can gem your monsters. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to ask, and I can actually give you, like, if you, if you say you want to use this monster for a specific purpose, you can actually ask me that, and I can, I can actually, uh, kind of think of all the, all the ways that I would gem that monster for that role. Um, and you can hit me up on Discord if you want me to answer your questions right away. I'm usually always on Discord unless I'm passed out or or fapping, all right, or fapping. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.